Broadcasting live from the After Hours AM studio, Joel Sturgis and Eric Edition of After Hours AM coming to you live directly from where, Greg? Where are we going from, Greg? I forgot where. We are tonight live at the Palmer House in Sox Center, Minnesota. That's Let's the room it. around town. We are at the Palmer House, and I got a full crowd. House is full. And Mr. Eric Olson, you're missing a big party. You're stuck over there in Cleveland, Rock City, but you know, we wish you were here. Oh, heck. I'm there virtually, aren't I? Kind of, sort of, in a way. Man, but we got a lot of stuff going on tonight. Well, number I'm one, in Norwegian. It's you, kind you of are, like Charlie's you're, Angels. You're just a box with a voice. So yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah. At, at Christmas, and everyone goes, "Oh my God, stay away from that guy." And that's kind of like what you are right now, because all they can hear is your voice. Uh. <laughs> exactly. Hey, man. Uh, you know what? We're doing a lot tonight, and we are, like I said, come, you guys. iHeartRadio is picking us up. We are live on iHeartRadio, UPRN, IRN, Dark Matter Radio Network. I could keep going on and on and on, but we don't want to bore anybody after all because we are 100% live in a great location. But I'd like to talk to one lady in particular that really has opened her heart to us. That's Kelly Freeze. Without her, we wouldn't have any of this. Oh, and thanks for letting us do this over here. I don't know. This is the thank you. It's it, my pleasure. Is this your first live remote in the building? Uh, for me, yes. Really cool. So we are the first. So why don't you tell everyone about the Palmer? Ah, well, a little bit of history about the Palmer House is it was built in uh, 1901 after a fire burned down uh, the previous building that was here. And one of the interesting things about the Palmer House is that. Um, from the day it was built and until today, it has always operated as a hotel, restaurant, and a pub. So it's it's as much the longevity of the business as it is the building that makes it unique. Now, I got to ask you something right away. I'm in room 15. Okay, is that haunted? I, ju- I just got to know. Well, <laughs> what I tell people is uh, the first two years we had the Palmer House, I did all of the housekeeping, and there isn't a place in the building that I haven't had experience. Oh, see, I was, gonna, I was hoping you're going to say, no, that's the one room here that it's not haunted. You're good to go. Because, you know, I get, I get a little Scooby-Doo once in a while. I'll run away. Every once in a great while, I get a little scared. But, no, that's very, very cool. And I know that you guys have had a ton of Ghost Adventures has been here, a lot of other TV shows. And i got to say, this place is beautiful, beautifully done, uh, really keeping it really original. That's the thing that struck me right away was this on th- uh, the way it is. Uh, what, what's the word, Greg? What am I thinking of? Awesome. awesome but it's period correct. Oh. It, you know, I mean, it's, you, you definitely took time to keep it that way. Well, it, it's important to me to maintain um, that integrity of the building as much as we See, can. Now, you are featured in Ghost Adventures, right? You were yeah. on this big screen. It was pretty cool to see you. <laughs> what was it like to have the boys here? I mean, were, were they a little unnerved as they stayed the night? What was what was behind the scenes feel? Um, actually, it was an amazing experience. Um, yeah, actually, they were. They were um, um, at, at one point... Um, I think within being here within the first half an hour, Zach had stepped outside and 
was calling somebody on the phone and uh, telling them, you know, we don't even have... Calling us therapist, going, oh my uh, gosh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but um, they just had their equipment out and were testing it and they were getting responses and and uh, a variety of things were happening that had they were pretty su- surprised that they weren't even working yet and they were aware of things yeah, going on. Yeah, because so. I watched the episode today before I drove here and I'm from Duluth area, so I had a good four-hour drive thinking of that episode in the back of my head going... Yeah, I really don't want the one where it's the two chairs, and if you, she, you, uh, you know, I don't want that mad girl mad at me in ghost form because yeah. you know, things are getting real. Yeah, right, she yeah. would have the well, advantage. The problem, <laughs> problem, Kelly's women don't like me anyway, and uh-huh. so you know, I mean, I, uh, you know, and, and so yeah, I know, I know, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> it, it's true, it's true. Just ask my wife; she'll tell you. Yeah, they all hate me. But uh, uh, no, it's a very, very cool place, and and I couldn't thank you enough for allowing us to come in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and do these events and for everyone to learn. Oh, and that's that. I guess that's what um, is probably my biggest driving force behind all of it is there's a history here that needs to be maintained. Sure. Uh, architecture that needs to be maintained. But I also believe that the Palmer House is a place for people to maybe broaden their horizons and learn and be willing to think outside the box. So, Kelly, I've been here a number of times, and I've investigated. We did one of our webisodes of Minnesota Ghost Box here. Loved it. Loved being here. But one of the things that I noticed when I came back here tonight was a wonderful piece of art at the back mm-hmm. of the building. And I'd love it if you could tell us what is going on there. Ah, it's actually a, it, it's kind of a fun story. The um. 16 years ago when I came to the Palmer House, um, that was a vision I always had from day one. Something that I wanted to do um, was to commemorate Sox and her um, boyhood hero, Sinclair Lewis, the first American to ever win a Nobel Prize for Literature. And it always fell under the category of things I wanted to do. It wasn't a need. Needs are like freezers and things like that. And, um, yeah, I just recently... Um, became a reality through uh, a set of very unfortunate circumstances, but um, lost a dear friend, and uh, their family asked that all memorials, as a result of that, go to making this a reality. And you weren't supposed to make me talk about stuff that is going to make me cry. So anyway, yes, now I have uh, Sinclair Lewis on the building. We've been um, it's beautiful. doing a lot of fundraisers trying to get it paid for it was more than just the mural you have to have a palette for the artist to work with and the building needed work too and it was time to do it so um it was my pleasure to do it too very very awesome and uh you know my co-host eric he is the author of america's most haunted is one of the hottest paranormal books about different locations aren't you eric good god yes and by (laughs) the way no because they all like me they all love you right <laughs> you're the ladies man that's the rumor i heard around town anyway well you know most most of them do well except i mean for it like, may only be like 90 well percent but yeah let's not get can't win high. come on now have you been drinking tonight because if you say right, 90 all right anyway all right. let's be uh, honest yes, for i'm a the co-author of america's most haunted the 10 most haunted public or semi-public locations in the nation, my friends. Yeah, so I'd like to, if you do, I know you're talking about a sequel, Eric. you got to get the Palmer in your next book. When you're getting ready to put pen to paper again, you got to come Hello. here and check it out. Hello, Eric. Are you there? Are you there, Eric? Are you live, Eric? Now I Oh, good. Well, what I was saying is that when you're ready to put pen to paper, you need to come to the Palmer, man, and uh, uh, check it out and get in the next book. Okay, I heard all that. Yes, I've, I've been poring over the website, and I was checking out the also the uh, things that go bump in the night page. And, and lots they're of up cool next. Books. They are up next, by the way. My Eric. only question is, when I click on the haunted link from the Palmer House page, it goes nowhere. Uh, and and that's with intent. Um, we actually recently I had um, asked that that be taken down. Um, because we had some other big projects going on here, and we had uh, taken a break from doing 
some of the tours and investigations and things that we normally do while we were filming another television show. And so um, that site will be coming back up with um, opportunities for people to come here and do tours, sign up for things. Um, we just haven't had the time to uh, be conducting them the last few months. So here's an easy question for you. What is the most profound paranormal experience that you've had within the walls of the Palmer? I think probably um, one day I was just passing through the building and I was I watched a, a person walk into the building and as they started walking to me, walking towards me, I was making uh, a few small steps towards them. Didn't want to shout at them across the room, but um, waited till they were a little bit closer to me to say, well, welcome to the Palmer House. Are you joining us for a bite to eat? And at the same time, I had one of my employees walk up behind me and say, Kelly. And as I turned around to say yes, they said, who are you talking to? And when I turned around, the person was no longer there. Uh. So. That's pretty profound. Well, and I also remember the last time that I was here for uh, Suzanne's event, uh, you spoke to us, and and, uh, I don't remember all the details, and I think it's before you owned the Palmer, was doing the walkthrough, and and the the one room that had all the flies on the floor, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, yes. Which I thought was a pretty interesting story. Uh, That is, and you know, so often people will ask me about stories, and um, then they'll jog my memory like you just did, and I'll go, yeah, that was a really good one. And, you know, when I say I've forgotten more than I remember, that's that's the truth. And actually, yes, that's room 11, and room 11 has been pretty funky today as well. So, Lisa was a 15. I'm just saying. (laughs) It's just don't, no, it, yeah. It's not even on the same floor. Sorry. Well, Maybe thank God go for visit. small favors. But, uh, you know, it's really, really cool. And this event is cool, but it wouldn't be anywhere without the, the team. Minnesota Goes Bump. Or Goes Bump, Minnesota. Sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> murder your name, your team name, Ryan. <laughs> and uh, John and Ryan are here. Love to get them on air with us. And, and, Kelly, thanks a ton for coming on. Love to have you back on the yeah. show no. to give you an entire show to talk about the phone. Thank so, you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks a ton. Happy to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. And now we've got the team. Goes Bump, Minnesota, guys. Still not right. John Marsh. <laughs> now I'm just messing with them. Now I'm just absolutely messing with them. But no, guys. How, how did you guys form your team, I guess, is the first question. Now we can get all the kidding out of the way. Well, uh, John and I had been working together for quite a while, and we just started talking about our previous experiences and Sure. Decided, um, you know, let's go out and try this. We went to a couple of public events and um, figured out something that we really enjoyed doing, and we decided to start the group and help people out there and, yeah. um, you know, be that piece of help that people might need. Well, the name, Things That Go Bump Minnesota, is a very cool name. How did you come up with that one? That was all John. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That, that was a... It's sort of strange, you know. It's just from the experiences you've had, things that go bump, and um, why not? <laughs> exactly, Eric. Man, what do you make of all this? Well, if I didn't know better, I would say it sounds like a room full of Minnesotans. There, oh, it is, man. Minnesota represent. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're all gophers. Say, hey, we're Minnesota nice, okay? <laughs> That's what we are. And you're all Norwegians except those who are not. Uh, I think it sounds like a lot of fun and a lot of people with uh, upper Midwestern accents hanging out together and having a good old time. You got the bar going because, you know, it's Minnesota. And uh, so what I want to know is, has anyone done any investigating yet, or are we going to actually try to do something live on the air? Well, I'm glad you asked. (laughs) I'm glad, we're that not. I'm glad I am. No. Uh, so asked. here's here's the deal. Um, we had promised to give away a spirit box tonight at the Palmer House, and so for those who want to uh, win one, good luck to you. Uh, it's it's actually there's over at the bar. You have to be here to win. Over at the bar, there is a, like a little fish bowl or something that you can put your name in, and then we'll randomly draw it out. The spirit box is being personally delivered. 
couriered from St. Michael, Minnesota as we speak. So it's on its way when in an armored car that uh, is actually keeps, keeps the demons in. Did I say demons? I meant friendly spirits. And I'm going to give that away tonight. So please, anybody who's here who would like to win, uh, please sign up. And what we're hoping to do is uh, do... I've, I've used the spirit box once or twice. So I, I, I somewhat know how to use it, and I'd love to show people how to use it. And we can do that after the show or during the show or whatever it takes. So, Eric, how's that for an answer? It's not a very good answer, I'm afraid. But uh, we're trying. We're trying over here. Did I make you go to sleep again? He's gone. No, uh, who, me? Yeah, uh, you I mean, were you guys, talking to you the whole time. You guys are breaking up on me. Oh, whole, well, uh, that's hard to I, do. I heard, and... I heard like every fourth word. Ah, and... good. Oh, then you didn't hear the bad and... stuff about you. Good, good, good. And Minnesota, box, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, let, you so, know, being that we're in, in 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 doing a remote and we're doing a via Wi-Fi, folks, and so it's normal that Eric, way over there in Cleveland, with his ultra slow internet, would have such a hard time picking everything up. But what uh, Greg was saying is, we will be giving away a, a spirit box, or better known as a SB seven, is how everyone knows it. And uh, you can win that if you come on down here and uh, maybe we'll give away tonight, maybe we'll give away tomorrow. We don't know. But more importantly, there's an event going on, man. There's a big event going on. Let's talk about the event. Well, our event starts uh, actually t- um, tomorrow night. And I believe check-in starts at 4 o'clock. And we have um, some attendees here tonight, which is nice to see them. And thank you for coming. Uh, we're all going to do a little bit of hanging out tonight and just getting ready for the weekend and hope everybody has a great time. I'm sure they will. Uh, when we walked into this building today, uh, this place was already buzzing. And I think the spirits are ready I, to communicate. I had my first paranormal experience. I didn't want to say anything until I hit airtime. I was coming down the steps after grabbing our monitor. I heard someone behind me, right behind me on the steps. I turned around to say, oh, hi. I didn't even know you are behind me. Excuse me. Nope, no one was there. It, it was like, oh, man. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. They, they, you know, you, you just knew yeah. that someone was behind you. It really freaked me out a little bit. So and The Palmer is uh, feeling hot, and I think we're going to have a great weekend doing everything. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would definitely agree. And we uh, also have nine tickets left if people still want to purchase. Just yeah, go, come on down, buy a ticket, yep, just enjoy go, the or Palmer. Or go to the website, uh, things that go bump MN, and uh, purchase it online, or... Come down and see us, and we can take care of business that way. Exactly. Exactly. We could definitely take care of everybody. But, Eric, man, um, you know, question for you is yes, when you were writing. I can hear you. When you were, yes, you can hear me now, can't you? Wonderful. When you were writing America's Most Haunted, did the, did the Palmer ever make the list, or is this a new uh, thing for you that you just recently heard about it? I do recall it on um – uh, Ghost Adventures has it been on any of the other shows? Oh, it's been on lots of other shows. Um, it's yeah, been... I, I, I recall it being mentioned when I looked at the website and saw you know what it looks like. I, it did bring back conjure memories. As far as the book went, the book is almost all what are fairly obvious super haunts. It's mo- it, there are a few hotels or at least modern current day hotels. But a lot of its former institutions, it's a lot of the kind of the obvious Oh, well, that's ones. where we belong, man. So, I mean, you're writing about the right thing. But the reason why I bring that. Or reason, murder home. Exactly. Yeah, I'd love well, to hear what the tales are from there. Go ahead. The reason why I bring it up is because it's a bit new for me. I've never been here. I always wanted to get here. And to already have an experience coming down the steps, all right, let's see what the rest of the night has to hold. So I, I think John's absolutely right. It's primed, and, and it always seems to be – it's very welcoming here. You don't you don't feel any kind of dread or anything when you come through. So no, absolutely. Very, very welcoming place. It, it seems like they're, uh, the spirits are more curious of us than we are of them at the moment, just trying to figure out what this guy's doing here with this microphone in his hand. But, uh, hey, man, you know, uh, go ahead and uh, tell us tonight. I guess we should really talk about who our guest is tonight before we get too far into things. Who are we have it on tonight, Eric? Very interesting show. He is a novelist, and we're certainly interested in the novels. But Sometimes. really, 
probably even more so, we're interested in the underlying feature, and that is we are talking with author Douglas Robinson about real-life vampires. These are not the vampires who sleep in coffins. These are not the undead. These are not uh, supernatural. These are actual human beings who are somehow, in his estimation anyway, his theory, they've been altered in some way, and they actually do require blood to live, and that's what his novel series wow. is about. Yeah, so it'll be kind of the top of next hour. It's really going to suck. I mean, it's really going to be great. Get it? Vampires suck. Uh, I guess. Top rule. Oh, Come I, on. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, while we have, uh, I know we're uh, getting near the bottom of the hour, half yeah. hour, bottom of the hour. I would love to hear who are these spirits that inhabit the Palmer House. Any of the historical tales ah, about who these Kelly people could tell are, or any, former any of are. our I'd love to hear that. Any of our uh, really accomplished paranormal investigators could pretty much give you a rundown of what they've found. I don't think anyone hundred percent knows yet, Eric, but I think there's a good indicator. Who is at the Palmer House? Boy, there's just so many different spirits. It's um. Uh... So so there's up on uh, the third floor. There's Lucy yep, and Raymond. Have someone named Lucy, yes. Uh, and. Uh, like the second floor, what is it? Room is it? Uh, room fi- uh, Annie is in eleven. Annie's in eleven. Personally speaking, Eric, uh, when we did our our shoot there, we were able to get Annie's name a number of times through the spirit box in her room. And you know, as validation goes, that's a pretty big deal. So I mean, we've been able to get Lucy's name. We've been able to get Raymond's name. We were able. The, one of the freakiest things, though, is if you go down to the basement. There's this lovely Christmas ornament that's about a four-foot-tall snowman. And uh, this thing is purported to move. And if I'm not mistaken, Ryan, you may have heard it move, right? Yeah, I actually uh, heard and saw it move. I was going through after one of our events. Uh, It wasn't the last one, but it was a previous one. And uh, I was just making sure nobody else was in the room, uh, shutting off all the lights and everything. Walked into this room. And as soon as I turned on the light, the thing moved like six inches towards me, heard it dragging across the floor, scared the crap out of me. Was not <laughs> expecting that at all. Now, I'd like to open up the mic. Um, when we come back from break, there's a lot of other folks that like to talk about the Palmer. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. We're going to take our break a little bit early, Eric, just so we have a little more time on that backside. And we'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Live at the Palmer House. <laughs> Back live, this is After Hours AM. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis, right along with me. Eric Olson. And Greg Bakken tonight. And we are talking over here at the Palmer House Lives, beautiful Sox Center, Minnesota. You're going to want to come down here, enjoy the event that's coming up. Things that go bump Minnesota, putting on a great event, loving it. Great people, great speakers. And there's only a few tickets left. Make sure you come down and get a ticket and get a chance to win a spirit box as well. Now, we have one more awesome, awesome, talented individual that wants to come and take the mic. Two more, rather. Wow, we got a jam-packed first hour. Mask, who you are and what your place is on the team. My name is Natalie Fowler. Hi, Natalie. I'm an author. Oh, cool. And I'm also a member of Ghost Stories, Inc., we do events up here as well. Really? Teach writing classes and take our wow. participants on ghost hunts in the name of creative inspiration. Very cool. Can I can I go on one of those maybe? Of course. That'd be awesome because I need some inspiration once in a while. Yes. Some creative inspiration, you know, that whole thing. Uh, how did that become about? How did you kind of decide to do that? Um, our founder of the group is Jessica Freeberg, and she is also a mystery writer and paranormal author. Uh, she just decided it would be a great way to, uh, it was a good idea to, for her platform to create a ghost hunting group that goes on uh, ghost hunts. In why the not? For, it, yes. <laughs> so, it goes together like peanut not? butter and jelly. <laughs> so, so the if one you're thing that. If you have a uh, ghost hunting group, oh, Joel, you might as well go on ghost hunts. You know, that's true. If you have a ghost, you might as well if you got a group. I mean, come on. Otherwise, what do you do? Sit around and play Nintendo or something? I mean, you're right. Well, we figured that if you're going to be writing about these scary things, you might as well go experience for, for yourself. Yeah, 
So, so the one thing that we should talk about is what you're going to be doing at this Palmer event tomorrow night because that's going to be pretty exciting. Yes. Tomorrow night I'm teaching a writing class. Uh, we will be down in the basement, and I am going to talk a lot about how to be inspired by your surroundings, and it's a little something we call method writing, where you put yourself in the position that your characters would be in in order to experience what they would experience, and then you can write about it. Well, if you, if you don't inspire people, I don't think anything will. I mean, come on. <laughs> Down in the basement, writing about ghosts, that whole thing. Sounds like a great time, and people can take part in that by buying a ticket, of course, come and joining all of us, and we're nowhere near done with this whole thing, and it, it's really going to be a lot of fun, but I cannot stress there's only a few tickets left, so do not hesitate. If you feel like you want something fun to do this weekend, get down here, buy a ticket. We will sell you one. Heck, I'll sell you mine. I'll sell you someone else's. I'll beat someone up to get you in here. <laughs> Don't worry. You have no idea the levels that I will go to to make sure you get here. But that being said, is now, as far as your paranormal goes, you're, you're, have you, you've been here before at the Palmer, right? Yes, many okay. times. So what was your experience here at the Palmer? What, so, what's your most notable? I have a lot of favorite experiences here, but my most favorite of all was the last time I was up here. I was up at an event for Suzanne Worthley, and she'll be talking next. But I was down in the basement with the guys from Things That Go Bump, and we were in one of the back rooms of the basement. And we had a ghost that was actively interacting and very much playing with us. He would move from one chair to the next and follow our equipment around, and the meters were going off, and it was very clear that he would go from one chair to the next to the next. It was very fun. That sounds like a hoot to me. <laughs> you know, and one of the things, too, and we don't need to necessarily get into it because it's a little bit more personal just for everybody involved but you know the thing too is when people talk about paranormal experiences and whatnot we talk about the cool stuff of the spirits and whatnot but also we all had this kind of a pretty serious and emotional experience with a child that same event yes. during the day on saturday and and it it's it's something that is worth bringing out that you know doing a paranormal investigation is not about you know getting the meters to go off and stuff sometimes it's about as we tried to cross over this person yes. which is it's, it's important to remember that i think yes uh a friend of mine kevin swanson he calls it spirit rescue and Swanee. i think that's really 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 appropriate name for it very very cool now do you teach excuse me guys you caught me live with some food in my mouth i'm sorry <laughs> i'm starving to death but uh um do you teach us one on one, the 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 writing? Like if someone called you up and said, "Hey, what's well, some inspiration a, in my life?" <laughs> I'm a freelance editor, so if okay. you've written something, you can hire me to read it. Boy, do I need opinion. you! I'm so happy I met you. <laughs> you have no idea. But I'm also the researcher for our group. So on Saturday morning, I will be teaching a segment of the class on how to research a haunted house, and that's pretty fascinating to my give me two minutes of that what, what do you do what do you tell people where do they begin they got a haunted house obviously it's haunted so we, we established that but how do you find out who's haunting it oh i think there's a lot of ways you can go about it and it certainly depends on the property if you're researching something that's a little more notorious like the palmer house it's pretty easy to find newspaper articles and things like that if you're researching a private residence that's a little more tricky but there's certainly ways you can go about finding out some information and i think one of the most important things as a paranormal investigator, when you walk into a situation where you are trying to gather evidence and figure out what the heck is going on in a house, one of the most valuable things you can have is names of people that have lived there. So anything you can do in your research to find names of people that have lived in the house or been in the house or in the property, I think that's that's like research gold. Heck yeah. Find out who died there too. I mean that's all sometimes you know, going through those kind of records. But, man, it was great talking to you. <laughs> very, very cool. You know, get out of here, kid. Yeah. Who's next? No, just kidding, of course. <laughs> All right, see you later. <laughs> I'll be talking to you soon. And thank you, Natalie. Next up. Hey, Natalie. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now time for the nice, the nice host to talk. Um, we're going to also talk to Suzanne Worthley, who... Uh, we've known each other for a while. Uh, Suzanne is an energy practitioner. Uh, she's also incredibly talented, intuitive. So uh, 
now I've probably been to about maybe four or five events with you, and every single time I'm more and more impressed with what you're doing. Oh, thanks. Uh, could you please explain to everybody what is it? What is it that you do? What do I do? What is it that you do? <laughs> I because get that there, question a there, lot. There's a couple different things to it too. It's like on Saturday there's going to be a. Uh, uh, a session that you're going to give, but that's a that's kind of a, a truncated session of like your overall right. like workshop that you have, which will also be coming up in September. Which I think you probably should come back to. I thought I thought <laughs> I, I thought I was. No, I meant your remote. I meant your oh, remote. Oh, oh, we yeah. got, I mean, seriously, I'm always thinking about I'm locking me, right now. Twenty yeah. second, twenty right. third, twenty fourth of September. We're here. All right. Consider it done. Yeah, We're okay. here. Or. or for nominal fee. No, yeah. I'll pay kidding. you in ghost fee. That, that's between you and Greg. But I will teach no, you all you we, need. We to will know. come back. We'll be happy That'd be to awesome. come back. That's See, I'm doing this live on air so that you're totally committed. We are totally committed. <laughs> we would be happy to come back. This is a marketing strategy. I'm going gotcha. to Gotcha. Right. Yeah. We, we would <laughs> love to We're come back. We're on pause right now. <laughs> but yes, definitely. We'll, okay, we'll definitely cool. love to come back. But yeah, very, very cool. I mean, yeah. how did you get into the paranormal? I mean, you look like a normal person. Well, I, I, I mean, how did you? <laughs> well, actually, that's funny to even say that because I'm actually a mortician's daughter. And so from the get go, I wasn't what we would consider a normal person. And death and well, dying was you know. always like, you know, dinner conversation. And so dead people, dead things was like, that was normal. So I didn't understand for many years that dead wasn't normal. And I think that as I got into the world of healing, and energy work, it became very apparent to me that um, death and dying was a critical part of that. And then I went into hospice work for quite a few years. So I, I was a end-of-life practitioner for hospice work, meaning that I helped the body shut down and um, moved them through the death process. And during that time, I learned a lot about the death process from the dying patients. And then that brought me into mediumship, which then got me talking to the ghosts, etc. So I was fortunate enough to actually meet Kelly at another event, and I in my corporate life prior was an event um, developer. So, of course, my little event brain went, oh, we could put these two modalities together sure. and make a really cool event. And my goal in my event is to help people understand that death is not scary. Yeah. To honor it. To have uh, experiences here because this is an incredible classroom with unbelievable amounts of energies that come through like a, you know, like an airport they're just moving, moving, moving all the time. And I think it's just, it's a bevy of information is what it is here. So, you know, we, we, we throw around the term paranormal because I'm like, I'm a paranormal investigator. A lot of us paranormal investigators, but that's not how you see it. Though, yeah, right? I don't do that. Yeah, word. That's not, and, that's and not, that, that's not dissing yeah. anybody. Nope, nope, I just, but it's what it is. Yeah, right? I, I actually have a little bit of a different feeling. And I think it's extremely important that anybody that does paranormal work needs to understand energy work. And they need to understand the, the rights and the wrongs, if we want to use that word, um, in terms of how you maintain your energy and how you stay safe and that you don't take anything home with you. Because we've had very many experiences at very many events where people take home hitchhiker energy. Um, they get dropped in. Okay, what's uh, a hitchhiker energy? See, uh, I don't pick up hitchhikers. My mother warned me against that. But well, you may hear if you're not careful, so I highly suggest you listen in class. It, okay. it's, it's basically what this means is, is you have what's called your aura or your energy body that's surrounding your meat body that's sitting here. And that energy body has a tendency to be able to open in the field of that. And if you are anywhere fear-based, you can be dropped in on by a spirit or an entity. And they are basically hitchhikering off of your energy field. Okay, and how, it's usually fear-based. Now, you got to show up. Everyone needs to show up and listen to you talk to maybe hear how to get rid of a hitchhiker. Well, I mean, in my opinion, know. that's why anybody that does paranormal work has to understand their field, has to understand how to ground and protect and discern. But if you're really doing a place like the Palmer and having an event such as this, and this is part of the reason why the bump team has me come too, you need a healer on site. You need somebody that has a practic skill. Some type of aftercare. That I can pull yeah. it out of, literally pull it out of your field. And if you don't have somebody that can do that, you'll go home and you will definitely... Yeah. Into and that would not be good. Let me tell no. you, I, you know, I already have people living with me I don't like. I don't need, <laughs> you know, a hitchhiker showing up right? next. But, Eric, did, did you catch all that? I, I know that over there in Cleveland, the Skype is not as strong as it once was. Did you catch all that? I did hear the great majority of it, and I found it very very interesting. It's definitely a different approach. Once again, here one commonality is it's not unusual that we are talking to people who grew up 
uh, in mortuaries. We just were <laughs> speaking to a mortician, in fact, yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago, who's a forensic guy. And uh, yeah, so from ID Discovery, I, I thought I everyone dead. was dead. Isn't everyone dead? <laughs> no, I'm not dead unless you want me to be. I don't know. What, what, do, you, what do you mean by that? Is everybody dead? No, I mean, that's what uh, he thought growing oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, he, he did. I remember when we talked to Graham. Thought, he's from ID hey, Discoveries. Hey, I speak for the dead. Yes. Yeah. He thought everybody Absolutely. was dead. And But no, it, it, what, what she brings up a great point, though, is that, you know, we unintentionally could go dabbling and find ourselves in a bad spot and maybe not intentionally, you know, understand or not even understand what we got ourselves into. Well, and not that. To, oh, sorry. I was going to say not to knock the shows, but the shows that are on TV right now make it look like, whoa, let's piss off the ghost and have some fun with this. And that that's actually very dishonoring to a disembodied spirit. And that's part of the reason why we do our spirit search event is to understand that honor and also to understand you don't really want to piss off a ghost. Not generally speaking, no, because, you know, they got nothing but time. Right. I mean, it's not like you have to clock into work on Monday. I can hang around (laughs) you all day, kick your ass. No one can do anything about it. Yeah. But, you know, but shows like Ghost Adventures, Ghost Hunters, they bring attention, though, to places like the Palmer, but also the history. So that's what I'm happy about. But I think you're right, though. I think maybe some cautionary should be thrown in there just a little bit, going, hey, you know, maybe unless you get some type of training, right. maybe, you know, a qualified individual to kind of take you through the ropes. Or at least um, I, I think one of my favorite shows is Dead Files in that they give an actual result at the yeah. end of the show and they ask the person to consider shaman work, energy work, practitioner work to remove that stuff, and and they have an honor to the system at the end instead of just stirring the pot and going bye. Well, you know. Let me ask you that though, because I find the one thing that frustrates me about something like Dead Files is that I don't feel like they actually they 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 might actually suggest like a shaman or something, but most of the people they're talking to are people in rural right. areas that have no idea no, what you're talking right. about no at all. Access. And they're left to try to find these people. Exactly. I mean, I don't know if I, 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 I appreciate that they, she comes up with people. I wish that they would do a little bit more to be able to finish the job. So I think they just they, have to post www.sworthly.com because that's actually, right? I mean, that, that's the kind of work we people do. That's what energy workers do. We clear the land. We clear the energy. We settle it. We go into the grid systems of the earth. I mean, it's not just ghosts. It's, it's, it's land energy that makes the vortex in the first place and it goes cosmic and there's a really big pattern to this. And, and, it's not it's not easy work and a whole lot of people can't necessarily clear they can clear a house potentially but if you've got land issues you need a practitioner that does quantum work and that's not so easy to find so yeah did that one go right over your head you you got no. this, you I'm got a face, I, okay. your face oh, right I now is like I, I'm oh, I, studio. Got, I got Crap. nothing <laughs> normally I'm in studio and they don't see that I'm that like just went whoop what <laughs> Hello. O- okay. <laughs> yeah. um, no, actually. Hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm like, I, I would, what? Are you in there? One sec. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. One sec. I would Earth love digital. to hear. <laughs> I, I, I'm actually fascinated with the, what you just said about the grid and the quantum and clearing the land. Yeah. And that's what's creating a vortex in the first place. Yeah. And Do we've even done it here tell. at the Palmer. Please we, explain all that. Well, even the Palmer. Can I tell Kelly? Is that fine? Okay. At the Palmer, when I first came here, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, it was white, uh, not a balanced place, and there was a lot of dangerous energy. I witnessed it the very first time, as did John and uh, Ryan, actually. We were downstairs, and there was some massive um, area that was uh, just basically a portal of energy, which means it's an opening where negative energy can come through and move quite quite extensively into the building. is it, dangerous. And I actually saw somebody get slapped and shoved by a ghost, and it was dangerous stuff. So I said to Kelly, why don't you let me go downstairs and restructure that? So what a worker like me does is I work with the hologram of the building. You, as a quote-unquote normal person, see this as brick and mortar. I see it as an energetic grid pattern of Makes hologram. perfect sense now. You see the you see the <laughs> matrix. Right, I am see. the matrix. Okay, gotcha. It's exactly, exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. So what I do is I go in and I find the flaws in the matrix. And I reorganize the matrix. But see, the matrix will carry things. I did a clearing in Hinckley, Minnesota. And if you're familiar with Hinckley, if anybody's listening, Hinckley had the grand fires. Toby's. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And and I was doing a church thinking I was just moving ghost energy out of the church. And it was actually, I was actually moving the grid patterns from the late 1800s, early 1900s of the Hinckley fire and massively moving hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of not only 
bodies of ghosts, but animals, trees, elementals. It was insane. It was such Hold cool. on. Hold on. Don't you get Super kind of cool. overloaded, though? You, you oh, I mean? was so psyched on you, that you, one. Yeah, I mean, like, you get 300 <laughs> people walking up to you going, help me out. I mean, how do you triage that, or, or do you um, do it all at once? I, I open a portal, and I move everything at once. Okay. Yeah, and I was actually moving grid patterns standing in Hinkley all the way up into Duluth, yeah. Down to East St. Paul, over to wow. Wisconsin. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're always welcome back in Duluth. You know, we we need some of that going. Actually, on, you got so. some messed up stuff. We in got some Duluth. messed up stuff. That yeah. will be. Uh, hey, anytime you want to play, I'll go up and play because there's yeah. some really well, crazy stuff. All of you stuff. guys, all everyone that we've interviewed, including the the guys that are put on this great event, the things that go bump Minnesota are always welcome up in Duluth. I'd love to even have Kelly come up to Duluth. Maybe a lot walk alongside the lake, see the sights, but and everyone's always invited to come check out those haunts as well. But I'm gonna give the microphone to Greg because he has his hand out. Joel, I have an announcement to make. Make your announcement. The spirit box is in the building to give away. Oh, Robert! Thank you, Robert Franks. We really appreciate the spirit box since it didn't show up. Henchman Robert has brought it down to us. and No, just kidding. Robert, man, he, thank you again for bringing it. Now, you guys have an opportunity to win the spirit box if you want to come down here and get your name in the ring, man. It, we got a fish bowl or whatever. It's a candy bowl full of names. The lucky participant that we draw, and I don't know who will draw that. We haven't discussed who the person is. If it's me, I will take bribes. Just letting everyone know. You know what I mean? If, if, if that's what you want to do. But I'm not the best person to draw because I, I'm kind of corrupt that way. Yeah. I, I would have somebody else do it. But anyhow, that being said, um, you can win your very own SB7. And it is really, really cool. I cannot wait to watch Greg. You know, we haven't talked to Greg yet, and that's someone I want to get on air with us during the remote. Because Greg, you know, he, he is kind of the unsung hero a little bit here of – Making the ghost box something that shouldn't be feared and maybe bringing some education with your show, Minnesota Ghost Box. Well, I mean, I mean, and the thing about Ghost Box and what our whole idea is, because it's it's me, it's my co-investigator, Nicole Hoppala. And the thing about what we tried to do simply was to show that you can talk about spirits, you can talk about paranormal investigation and not make it scary. Because that, in my mind, paranormal investigating is a beautiful thing. It's a gift. It's not it's not anything more than that, because you can you can speak with people who have passed loved ones, whatever. It's those people who want to talk to dark entities, you know, so be it. It's dangerous. I wouldn't do it. But what we wanted to do and what we came to the Palmer to do for our first episode of the web series was simply to show that this is a great place, that the, when you walk in, the energy is amazing, the spirits are amazing, and that uh, that's all we want to do is help people and be able to get people to understand that these places – it's not all darkness, that there is some wonderful, beautiful light that's involved. As we always say, uh, love and above when we do our investigations. Man, very well said. You almost brought a tear to my eye and everything. Wow. I, I thought there was something wrong with your eyes. No, so, uh, I'm like, great. wow. I, I, you, know, the, you know, I am human once in a while. I, I, I do <laughs> cry. Eric, man, did you catch all that? I did. I heard that. That was very touching. And there should be a reason. It should be something more than just thrills or just purely scientific investigation although of course there's nothing wrong with that but uh, we are we're talking about if if we're correct if the theories are correct we're talking about former human beings who have some reason to be sticking around here and who may have some connection to us or at least to the building where they're found or the area they're found and we should care about them and how they turn out and how they got there in the first place it should be more than just a one-dimensional thing. So I agree with that entirely. And uh, again, I, I'm finding a lot of this discussion fascinating, learning some things I did not know. I've really not literally thought about our world as being a matrix grid, matrix. but apparently it is. You have two pills you can choose from. <laughs> choose, eat the blue pill. <laughs> it's the matrix. But yeah, you're right, Eric. Uh, you're right. I mean, I didn't think of it in those terms and when she brought the matrix that Click to my mind. Okay, now I get what you're talking about. Because before, to be honest, I look like a deer in the headlights, getting ready to hit my Mack truck, going, what the hell did she just tell me? Sure did. But it really, I know, thank you for reinforcing that. No problem. I I know, really. (laughs) And uh, 
you know, it wouldn't be radio without without you telling them that. No, but uh, uh, Eric, you know, it, it's it's very cool. You need to get here. You need to get to the Palmer. Well, it sounds like a very interesting place that also draws interesting people. It does. It, they're all interesting. All right. Now, we really haven't talked about how this is going to be given away, this ghost box. Well, whoever has the most money, just give it to me and you get it. I mean, I don't know how else it would work. <laughs> you can so. own it for $153.27. Well, I mean, I honestly, I mean, has everyone who wanted to put my, uh, put their name in, put money in, boy. Well, well, I, <laughs> put yeah. money in my pocket. Have you put it in yet? Well, I, I haven't put my name in yet, but I, I'm disqualified, though, aren't I? Yes, you certainly are. Oh, rats. I think that the person, why don't we have Kelly? Uh, yes. First, I just want to make sure you got, you got to put your name in. We're going to do this giveaway right here live, guys, and uh, there's going to be other giveaways throughout the night. We're also going to offer maybe a couple sessions down the road with a ghost box session. I'll do an EBP session. Absolutely. If Somebody want wants it. to come in, go one-on-one with Greg or me, which is kind of a frightening thing on its own, but, you know. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, are, we do, are we doing this? Are we doing this now? Is this really happening? Yeah, let's do it now. Right, let's, let's do, do it this now. now. The, the winner of the... PSB7 Spirit Box at the Palmer House event. You got you to get your hand in there more. I'm sorry. You're only getting part. Oh, oh I don't want to hear Kelly, draw mine! <laughs> Greg Bakken. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Who is the winner? The winner is Melissa Peterson in room lucky number 13. All right, Melissa, enjoy the SB7, courtesy of Minnesota Ghost Box, After Hours AM, things that go bump Minnesota. Thank you guys all for coming down here. You guys have made this remote a lot of fun. One of the most best remotes I've done in a long time with the best crowd. And it's a lot of, getting will be a lot of fun. I guess September we're doing it again, Greg. We I locked ourselves so. in. Man. <laughs> locked us in for another remote. We will be here again. Give me time to sober up, right? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Did you hear that, uh, Eric? We gave away an SB7, man. Well, naturally, it went to room 13. <laughs> You're right. It did. You're right. I didn't think about that. Hmm. Is but, it a coincidence? I, don't I probably think, I probably think so. it is. But, you know, we'll go with that. We'll, we'll, we'll go with, you know. It being, but anyhow, it was great to give that away. Again, we're giving away more stuff throughout the weekend. I got some books that uh, Llewellyn has shipped us for the um, uh, for giving away through radio. I got those to give away all weekend. So we're not done yet. Even after the show, we're still not done. We got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Who knows? I have thought about maybe cracking the mic tomorrow night one more time. Nice. And talking more about what's going on here at the Palmer and all that kind of good stuff, but you know we're we're almost done with this first hour of the show, and uh, really, you know, it is kind of really overwhelming. This this building is a little overwhelming. Do you feel the energy? Do you I feel do. It all over you, right? I, I, I do. And the more I talk, and I, I'm, I assure you, it's not the grain alcohol I'm drinking. I, I assure you that it is spirits that are around us. It's kind of weird. When they said that the Palmer will surround you, they were not kidding. I, I can actually, sitting here, you can almost feel that we're not alone. And there's a lot more people in this room that yep. we can't see. Got a lot of friends in here, and they're not all living. So it's really cool. That's all right. My best friends have been decrepit and dead anyway sometimes, you know. But my dog was dead for the first two years, didn't realize it. <laughs> I just thought he was slow. <laughs> I just thought it was slow. You should eat some food. It, no, it, really was, it, was, it was a stuffed dog, you see. No. It was stuffed, right? And it, it was right. living once until the UPS man hit it. And I know. It's a true story. It's a true story. I, I know. And, and then my, my, my grandfather was a taxidermist. He's like, hey, I need some practice. Give me that damn dog. I know, right? It is horrible. It's a horrible story. I didn't mean to offend anyone that loves dogs, although I know I just did that. But <laughs> that is the story of the my dead dog 
that I love so much. <laughs> I'm just trying to fill time right now. No, just kidding. I'd like to have Kelly one more time pop on, if you wouldn't mind, and tell everyone uh, mainly, you know, what is your busiest seasons for the Palmer? And if they want to come here and investigate, what do they have to do to do that? Who do they got to talk to? Um, me directly. That's okay. not something that you can just call and um, schedule something like that like you would calling to book a room. Sure. I I run people through the ringer before I let them come in, not going to lie. You have to uh have a pretty thick skin and but my building and my unregistered guests is my number one priority. And so um even Ghost Adventures worked me for 3 years before I would let them come. I just I take it that seriously. Sure. Sure. Uh, that is really well said, Kelly. I just want to end this segment on that note, letting people know how they can get here, maybe approach you, but also how much you love the building. Absolutely. And, and that's really paramount is how way you taking care of it. We got to run a break. We come back. Thank you for listening to this edition of After Hours AM. And please remember to like us on Facebook and also follow us over on Twitter.